everyone, and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah, I'm Mrs. Social Studies. And I'm Jake, and that leaves me as Mr. Social Studies. And today we are excited to teach you about how we teach ancient Egypt and exactly what materials we use. Some of these are free, some of these are paid, but we want you to walk away from this video having a really good understanding of what types of things you can include in your Egypt unit. And let's jump right into it. Yeah. So to jump right in, let's talk about vocab activities. We do like to start our units with different vocab um, activities to help students practice, going over some different vocab words, as well as giving students multiple opportunities to go over and practice those words. So in our situation, especially with the age of distance learning and moving more to digital activities, we put together a set of different digital activities for Google Drive. So with these, there's a range of activities. I know you were using the prehistory versions mm -hmm. just this past yep. week, but there's Google Forms, there's Google Slides, there is Quizlet. Those are all great tools to help kids review the activities in a more interactive and fun way, especially when, if students learning remotely, it's easy to share a link with them. And we align these words to the same words that are on our word walls. So our ancient Egypt word wall, same exact words and definitions, just so it's super consistent for the kids. Anything to make it easy, especially during, like you said, these times of, of distance learning. So something else that we do to start our unit is, I like to show, because I teach this stuff here, I like to show as many videos as I can, short little clips just to bring the history content to life for them a little bit. One that I'm particularly fond of, just what they do in general, is National Geographic. This is not paid for by National Geographic. <laughs> not sponsored. Uh, not sponsored. But they're, they've got a series of, like they call them like History 101 videos, and I know that they do these for other subjects as well. But they have a History 101 Ancient Egypt video. It's about four or five minutes or so, but it gives a nice overview. We've used it in the past as an introduction to our Egypt unit, where it gives a brief description about, you've got pyramids, the mummies, it breaks up the three eras of ancient Egyptian history, so your old, your middle, and your new kingdoms. It talks about some of their other major innovations, such as the solar calendar, for example, thinking of off the top of my head. So it's just a very, very handy, uh, resource. Hieroglyphs, they talk about that in there as well. Papyrus, all kinds of standard ancient Egypt terms, they're all in there. And so it's got really resource. good animations too. Yes, so, yes. Um, I think that sometimes there's certainly no shortage of those old style documentary mm -hmm. videos on YouTube that are, you know, an hour long. And, you know, for a history nerd like ourselves, you know, that's, that's interesting, but for the kids, not so much. So this is nice. It's quick and good animations, mm -hmm. it's the perfect it's, combo. You're just a few years old, I think, so yes, it's pretty pretty relatively new. So next resource on our list is from the DBQ project, the Nile River DBQ, and the sources that are all in there are about answering the question, how does the Nile River shape or affect life in ancient Egypt, or something to that effect. So there's sources such as their hymn to the Nile, that shows their feelings on the Nile River. There's recreated maps in there that show you the overview of the ancient Egyptians' geography. And there is like, I think it was like a photo showing different boats traveling along the Nile River. Like what is it that they're carrying? The students are analyzing that. A couple other sources in there as well, like the harvest seasons, the growing seasons with the Nile River. Just another good activity for practicing primary source, secondary source analysis analyzing and comparing sources, you get the idea. It's, it's pretty good. And what I should have mentioned earlier is that everything we talk about, we're going to have linked below in the description field of this video so you can uh, access that. And we also have a free unit plan that breaks down these activities as well in written form with the links, but it also gives estimated number of days you'll use each thing. Of course, with the DBQ here from the DBQ project, we can't sell it, so we have that linked wherever that goes. Uh, one of my favorite activities though, and one that gets kids really excited is the Google Earth field trip. Mm -hmm. Now, kids love using Google Earth. Of course, the first time that you use it, they're going to want to look at their house and they're also going to want to look maybe at their school. Every time you use it, they're going to want to do that. Let's be honest. However, 
However, it's actually kind of nice. They can start there and then um, when they type in the locations of ancient Egypt, they can actually see the journey take place and kind of travel around that globe um, to visit the lo those locations. But this Google Earth field trip is a great way of combining geography with architecture because there are so many different and really cool architectural sites from ancient Egypt that students can visit. And we've got some little clues that students have to try to figure out which location matches with which clue. And that is both a printable and digital activity, so whichever method works best for you, you can use it. But it's definitely been a fun highlight of ours. Absolutely. Yeah. Related to that, if you're looking for something really quick or even just to show some of this at the beginning, Google Maps also has a resource that can be scrolled through. There's not an activity per se that goes along with it, but you could either use it as a quick overview or if you only have, you know, five, ten minutes for the students to do this or if you need like an early finisher activity, we also thought that was pretty interesting and it also helps students visualize it more. Absolutely. Jumping off of that, another resource out there, there's not necessarily a built-in activity for them to do, but there are several YouTube videos out there that show ancient Egypt using virtual reality. So there's one really good one from the British Broadcasting Channel that goes into the Great Pyramid of Giza and allows you to see the different chambers inside there it takes you through but then you can also take a 360 like panoramic view you can turn around uh, and look at the pyramid from any angle as they're going along there are different word captions that come up that explain what exactly it is that you're seeing there's some other really good ones out there too this is one that i've used off the top of my head really really cool gives them that extra experience as best as we can of actually having them be there and, and see it Virtual travel. Virtual travel, that's right. It's all the rage lately. And to add on one resource real quick also that's available is the Giza Project with Harvard University, also called like Digital Giza. We'll have a link below, but they have a bunch of different, honestly, we only scratched the surface when we were looking at this resource so far, how many uses there are, but you can visit several different locations. There are also some like panoramic sort of things, videos, images, lots of information, artifacts. Really, that source could be an amazing resource that you could use to design a really cool project for your class um, or a neat activity for the students to help them understand these details about the pyramids and other related sites. So definitely check that out if you haven't heard of that one as well. Something else to check out. Yeah, I don't think you can do a unit on ancient Egypt without talking about mummies and the uh, mummification process. Usually, my experience doing this for, what, I've done this six years now, I think? That's usually like the highlight of the unit. The kids are fascinated. I would say months. maybe even highlight of the year, you get kids all the time saying, oh my gosh, remember the mummy project we did like back in sixth grade? They love it. They really seem to. So. A couple resources that you can use as far as teaching them how the mummification process works. There's one really good video I like that came out a few years ago from Ted Ed that is I think a five minute clip or so again, nice and short and sweet, but it shows the, the major steps, depending on the resource you look at, the steps of the process are gonna be a little bit different in terms of what specifically is covered, but it does a really good job of giving that overview of how it works, it has a really a funny character in there um, that's meant to look like the Egyptian uh, god of embalming, Anubis, that uh, just say it's really cute in terms of how they, they did the oh, animations. Yeah. The animations and, are great. And uh, show the process off with a little bit of humor. So that is really awesome. So the Mummy Project, it's ideal when it's not a pandemic, but we do have some digital components to it that are on our TPT store that you can use in place right now and a video component with it. But the idea behind it is that the kids actually present the mummification process. They go step by step showing the procedure. Hands on. Hands on to their classes. And what makes it stand out is that the kids can come up with their own backstory behind it. They can explain how their mummy became or came to be a mummy in the first place. They can add in some humor to it. They can add in whatever kinds of props. We always call it like mummification on a budget. Whatever it is that they want to use to represent the process. We've had people use like, you know, bananas, for example, to represent the lungs. We've had people for their sarcophagus as, hey, go hide under the desk and that's your sarcophagus. 
But I've also been blown away. Kids will get really into it and they'll make props for it. I've seen books of the dead. I've seen people come in with cardboard, sarcophagus, coffins that they wanted to use to bury themselves in. Obviously the toilet paper uh, makes, makes an appearance in there for the, the linens and the, the wrapping portion. But it's something, I think the kids, they, they don't forget it in terms of actually experience it and doing it. If you're looking for a way to liven up I mean, ancient history courses, I think sometimes get a bad rap for being too much information or, or too dull. But this is something that I think even your non-history kids, they, they really, really enjoy doing it. Ideal in a non-pandemic environment, but still very still possible, possible, very possible. Especially with like having kids make a video yes. to showcase that using items from their home, um, very doable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Social distancing though, of course. You can do that on video. <laughs> and then wrapping up the mummies, no pun intended, the mummy portion of this here. There's a really cool video. I just came up with that. Top that was a good one. I know, right? Uh, there's the Secrets of the Pharaoh video. This was originally released as like an IMAX style video. It has uh, the late but great Christopher Lee narrating it so his powerful voice automatically captivates me at least but they they cover the main storyline is about Ramses the Great and the discovery of his mummy and really the like the largest or one of the largest uh, discoveries of mummies ever like in a previously forgotten tomb and area in the Valley of the Kings so it really is fascinating and it also of course it gives you a basic overview of other uh, pieces of information about ancient Egypt. So it's a nice way to kind of reinforce what you've been teaching earlier on, but then also bring in a new story into it as well. And I think we purchased that on Amazon. I think you can find it. You can find it on Amazon. Yes. So, Mummy Secrets of the Pharaohs is a, it's an IMAX. We'll have everything linked. Of IMAX course. video. It's great. Perfect. Well, I'm glad you brought up pharaohs because how do you teach the pharaohs? Uh, we actually have two different ways that we've taught them and you can decide uh, for yourself which sounds like a better fit or use both if you want some extra reinforcement. So kind of originally, um, the first resource that we had put together for teaching about the pharaohs was a research project for students. It's a choice project. So we do try to encourage student choice and allow students to pick whatever is suited to their strengths or what they want to work on. So in this particular pharaoh project, kids research one pharaoh and then they apply that knowledge in one of the following projects, uh, creating like a 3D tomb. They can write a rap or a song about that particular pharaoh. They can do a talk show segment where they're interviewing the pharaoh, asking them some key questions. And, and then they can also design, like if they're more visual focused, they can design a magazine, like cover and a few articles about it. This is a group project, but it can also be modified to do individually, especially in social distancing times. But we've seen really good results with that when um, I used it in the past. And then more recently, something that you know, you might, you get a little annoyed with me because I love this resource so much, but I'm trying to incorporate more job skills uh, for students because honestly, a lot of kids, I think we could say across the board are not, a lot of districts are not providing job related skills to the extent that kids need it. So this resource corresponds with other units. We also do the same resource where there are resumes of several of the key pharaohs of ancient Egypt and students have to read over resumes and analyze them and then decide who they're going to hire for different positions. And what I love about this so much is that in a resume context, it's different than a one page reading, but you get so much information packed in there in a more digestible way for students. So they, if students don't really like reading as much or if reading's tough for them, having like a bullet point format like a resume is actually kind of helpful. And kids have to really focus in on those details to determine would they want this particular person or candidate for a certain job? And it takes them behind the scenes of the hiring process. So even though we're not formally saying, hey, this is how you write a resume, kids are observing examples of them. And so I think that's why it's such a positive and fun resource to use. And for the record, it is a great, <laughs> it is a great resource. I bring it up all the time. She talks about it a lot, but it is, it is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Before we wrap up, a couple quick little 
non-essential but fun resources to include, especially looking for, you know, early finishers or if you need an emergency sub plan or even if there's just you know, a low key half day or Friday where you need a quick activity. Um, one fun resource is we've got some hieroglyphic decoding. So giving students a chance to sort of translate the hieroglyphics, not necessarily higher order thinking, but we have some secret phrases that the students can go through and they can actually then visualize what the hieroglyphics look like and kind of understand about how to decode it. We did include a funny joke, or at least we think it's kind of funny there. It is pretty funny. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want to sure. share? Sure. I got to make sure I look at it off camera just because uh, I always mess up the wording. So if two pharaohs farted at the same time, what did they just share? Wait for it. A toot in common. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's not just that, but we did include that joke. That's there. all it is. Just <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, I, I, there's like ten different there, things yeah. that students can translate. But anyway, um, that so that's a fun little silly low key activity. If you don't want the fart joke there, you can delete that. Um, but we also have an early finisher like worksheet that students can use, which we put in some vocabulary words and some other little fun puzzles for students to do. Again, these are not necessarily super substantial activities, but they're great for that early finisher emergency sub plan situation. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you found this helpful and have a few new ideas of what you can incorporate in your Egypt unit. Of course, if you want to check out any of the links we mentioned, again, check out the description field of this video. And if you've got questions, leave comments so we can help you. And if you want to watch other videos, we've done some of these past videos before for uh, walkthroughs of different units, you can click over here. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, you can do so up here. Thank you. Bye.